I spent most of my career looking at the stock market and I would often wonder why your companies were privately held. Why was Godrej and Boyce not listed in the stock market? Because you know you had such iconic businesses, you had such great recall and, uh, uh, and fondness and affection from the Indian public. Why did you choose never to take the company public and do an IPO? Well, it's a complex issue, but you know, the main reason to go to the public is that if you need to raise finances uh, for your expansion and growth, then you would uh, go to the public. I think we had always a strong uh, cash flow and uh, adequate resources for our businesses. And uh, we never felt the need to actually go public. Hmm. That's one reason to go public. The other is to share it. I mean, your wealth and fortune with shareholders, make them participants in your in your growth. Uh, capital raising is one aspect of it. Uh, even going forward, you don't feel that uh, your part of the businesses, Godrej and Boyce and its allied businesses, could ever see an IPO? You know, nobody will ever say never. But uh, I think for the foreseeable future, I don't see that happening. But, uh, you know, nobody can uh, really predict exactly what should be done or can be done. So I would not uh, count it out. But I would not uh, uh, say that this is something that is being planned. What if the new generation of leaders at your group think differently? I mean, what if uh, Nairika and Navroz told you, Dad, you know, we want to do it differently. We want to take the company's public, mount it on a much more visible scale. Uh, uh, do you think that's a possibility or do they share your views on, on this matter? See, no, I don't agree with you that we want to be more public uh, can only be done through a listing in the stock market. I think there are many different ways that you could do that. So I don't necessarily buy your argument. Fair enough. Uh, uh, but let me talk about the group that you are at the helm of because it has very diverse businesses. Uh, you know, um, I mean, you, you at one hand, you're looking at appliances, which is very successful. And then there is aerospace, there is electronics, there's capital goods. Uh, uh, do you want to keep it all under one umbrella or do you think uh, these diverse businesses should be separated, even demerged, and they can be run as independent and strong entities in their own right? Yeah. No, that's a fair question. I think uh, my view is that the strength of Godrej and Boyce is the diversity of its businesses and the complementary nature of many of the businesses. Uh, I think if you look historically, you know, we expanded uh, into the businesses in which we are for good historical reasons. You know, now whether those historical reasons uh, hold for the future or not is a different matter. But there I have always found that there is enormous uh, benefit to the uh, diversity of our businesses. So about two thirds of our businesses are related to customers, consumers, you know, directly or indirectly. And one third of our businesses are essentially industrial uh, businesses, which make things like forklift truck, you know, equipment for the oil and gas industry, uh, etc. Uh, a newer business in the last 30, 40 years has been aerospace and uh, defense, etc. So I, I see that, you know, there is a lot of commonality in two thirds of the businesses, which are all consumer bases uh, facing and one third of the businesses, which are all industrial customer B2B facing. So uh, I look at it basically as these two major buckets uh, that we work with. And so I don't, yes, they are different businesses, but there's a lot of synergy uh, amongst them. No, that's a fine distinction, uh, Jamshed. And I want to talk a little bit more about it because, you know, uh, the government's CapEx uh, thrust has been something which has been very pronounced over the last couple of years. Uh, and we've seen the issues of inflation, COVID, etc. And consumption has gone through a few bumpy patches over the last couple of years. 
So keeping all this in mind, which would you say is the stronger engine of growth at Goldridge and Boys? I mean, the B2B businesses, uh, the industry facing businesses that you spoke about, or the B2C, the consumer facing businesses? Well, frankly, if you ask me, I think both uh, and more or less equally, because I think uh, if you look at, at penetration levels of consumer facing industries uh, that we are in, you know, it's still very, very uh, small, uh, whether it's home appliances, it's furniture, etc. Uh, you know, so I don't see any major roadblock as such. Uh, to uh, increase uh, the penetration uh, in in the consumer facing businesses india is a young country uh, with you know greater disposable income and uh, we sell all over the country and so i don't see that as a problem area at all in fact i see it as a big growth engine as far as our industrial businesses are concerned again because exactly what you said you know the greater emphasis on manufacturing, greater emphasis on investment-led growth. Uh, so, you know, there will always be a very strong market for capital goods and for uh, intermediaries. And uh, even as far as defense and aerospace are concerned, till very recently, uh, you know, when the private sector was not being encouraged uh, to enter into that field, uh, as of late, as you well know, you know, uh, just a couple of days ago, I think the defense minister made a statement that 85% of India's purchase for defense and related uh, uh, items will be from Indian suppliers. So I think that both areas have enormous opportunity to grow. There is no barrier as such in terms of the market. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.